throw our hands. And in which the spirit of the age that is over that cosmos is the world that they're going to have to overcome. Just as we had to overcome in our day to be seated here to die in front of the Lord. Uh, and and I was just observing and enjoying and watching. There was some good and there was some not so good that I experienced. I shared a couple of those things before church. Um, but this week, Colin gave me a sermon title. Now, you know, he's the one that Emmanuel keeps picking out that's supposed to be the preacher. I've never told Chris. He would just not handle that well. He would work against it, I'm sure, because he wants his men, his guys to be macho men, okay? Mm -hmm. But anyway, they keep telling me that it's Colin that's going to be the preacher. Well, you know, a preacher preaches even when they don't know they're preaching. If, you got, if you're called to preach, you're, it's going to come out of your mouth, that's right. even if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Whoever God is in you, even as a child, it will come out of your mouth. I had discerning of spirits when I was a child. I didn't know what to do with it, but along the way, God taught me. But anyway, so this is our conversation. Granny, have you ever heard of the dude perfect men? No. Well, Granny, everybody else has. Everybody knows about them. They're really great Christian men from Texas. Colin, you just gave me my sermon title for my Father's Day message. So on my return, I researched the Christian men's ministry on Google. Sure enough, it's there. Look at men. Um, they've got a really neat message. And I encourage you to go to their website. They, they, it's also a business because they're selling all kinds of stuff. But, uh, but they're sharing their journey of growing up in their world. I'd say they're young men in their mid-20s to early 30s. Or maybe late 20s. And what it was like for them to come into all the challenges of their world and their generation and their choice that they made to serve and love Christ with their lives. Uh, one or two of them, I think, was a PK. And if you've ever been around PK kids, uh, they usually go rebel the hardest and the fastest. It doesn't have to. But just to prove that they're different from their father and mother. So they tell us that journey. So I'm going to borrow, borrow their ministry business name today. And it's doomed to perfect. I'm going to honor the men of the RFL Church Fellowship with that name. Doomed to perfect. You perfect, okay? <laughs> I am so blessed in this church. We are all so blessed. We have a group of men who are honorable, whom I respect and honor as fathers, husbands, and stewards to this church. Each of you at some point in your life made a choice to honor the Lord Jesus with your life. Now some of you may have knocked you down to get your attention. He may have knocked you off your high horse to get you there. Yes, ma'am. But you still had a choice. At that point, you could have said, no, I, I'm going to hell, or yes, Jesus, I'm going to follow you. Yeah. And at that time, you made a choice somewhere in your life to follow Jesus the best you could. And when men are honored in the Old Testament as men of God, honorable men, the Hebrew word is ishi. This means a champion, good, great, mighty man of high degree, a steward, one who is worthy. Steward is one who protects and is responsible for something considered worth caring for and preserving. We have been stewards of this ministry as we watched God bring it through the burning fire of, cha of changing one ministry into another ministry and bringing forth a brand new ministry <coughs> having to do with his timing for this time. Amen. It is amazing love, and I asked Carolyn to sing that song today because it, it so identifies with this message. But it is a 
amazing love that enters a man's heart to support a wife, children, home, and church. That's an amazing love that a man would take that on. There are many who do not. I'll support me, but um, this is the heart of love of Father God. Amen. He supports us. I don't worry about uh, where our finances are coming from. I'm not. I don't spend any time worrying on that. Just so y'all know, mm-hmm. I pray about it because we had to. But you know what? It's not my responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's my father's mm-hmm. business to provide for me. Amen. It's my husband's business, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. to provide for me. And if he wants a ministry, and he wants these people ministered to, and he wants this us in his country club, then it's on him. Amen. That's just the way I roll. Amen. I don't spend any time fretting over it. But this heart of God can only come through the love of Jesus Christ in a man or woman. Let us consider what kind of love is the Father's love. We all know about it, all experienced it. The one thing his love is eternal. He loved us from the foundation of the world. It wasn't our idea when we were born to fall in love with God. It was his idea that he had already loved us. Before we ever existed or had done anything good, he thought of us, loved us, and delighted in us. Every earthly father would delight to see their sons and daughters grow into their image. That's before their ego gets cracked, crushed, and mm-hmm. not decide that maybe your image might not be the best image for them to grow into. Once they begin to rebel from that. But good men, residentially, financially, and emotionally independent, able to make their own way in life, Good husbands and fathers, good providers, good Christian men, men who fear God and live clean lives before God and man, men who are sensitive to the Holy Spirit and recognize when things are unclean. Amen. As we know from our journey, maybe you did, but I didn't. We did not arrive to that place without a few stumbles along the way. Amen. Actually, as far as I know, I've never arrived anywhere yet, and I don't know anyone else who has. I know a lot of super hot shots, but I also know that they haven't arrived anywhere yet. Proverbs 24, 16. The just man falls seven times and rises up again. A just man falls seven times and rises up again. Then he goes on to say that the wicked just go ahead and keep on being wicked. Mm-hmm. But a just man will rise again. Mm-hmm. Now, also, also in another scripture, it says that our faith goes through the fire seven times yeah. and is purified in the fire. Yeah. And then as I was looking through this seven times, each time God purifies someone in the Bible, there's a seven times purification. So if wherever you are right now, it's just a purification process. Mm-hmm. But get up and get over it and get out of it. Mm-hmm. Just as our Heavenly Father did not give up on <coughs> us when we stumble and fall, neither does our earthly Father give up on his children when they stumble and fall. Mm-hmm. We certainly don't enable our children by rescuing them. Mm-hmm. No. We're there to continue to give them our love as they rise up again. You heard me say that in ministry, I just throw a golden ring. If anybody wants to catch it, grab hold of it. But you got to grab hold of it and swing. I just keep throwing the golden ring. And it's up to wherever you are to grab hold of the golden ring and swing and, and grow. That's what we do as parents. We give them their opportunity. We throw them their, their opportunities because they've got to grab it. 
When they have overcome, they will be able to stand squarely on their own two feet in the face of adversity and temptation. Amen. It is written in Hebrews 1 3. Jesus has been appointed heir of all things. Who being in the brightness of his, and that would be God's glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Not only did Father to God delight in the Son, but his love and delight is in the sons of men. Proverbs 8, 30 through 31. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. <coughs> and my delight were with the sons of men. God is called the father of the stars, the heavenly luminaries, because he is their creator, upholder, and ruler. Of all rational and intelligent beings, whether angels or men, of spiritual beings and of all men, of Christians, as those who through Christ have been exalted to a specially close and intimate relationship with him. The Father of Jesus Christ, as one whom God has united to himself in the closest bond of love and intimacy known to man. And by Jesus Christ himself and by the apostles and by you and I, we call him Father. This amazing love has been deposited into the fathers of this church and the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. <coughs> I've spoken often, and you've heard it many times, but you'll hear it many more, of the covenant the Lord initiated with me concerning family. He initiated it. I didn't. I mean, I prayed and interceded all these years for families and my family and all kinds of families, but then God initiated a covenant with me. <coughs> And he said to me, Carolyn, if you will answer the call to start a church, your family will follow you. If you do not, they will go the other way. All those who help you, their family also will be saved. Amen. 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 This is not a mandate upon my life, not only a mandate upon my life and this ministry, and this ministry, <coughs> but it is a covenant initiated by Father God. I'm not backed up or slacked up. Do you think he will? No. Absolutely not. Will I see it all happen in my lifetime? I don't know, but it's going to happen in somebody's lifetime. Because God made the covenant. <coughs> Only thing I have to do is start a church. Mm -hmm. So, consider what kind of love is the Father's love. It was from eternity that the Father purposed in his heart to bring us to eternal happiness. <coughs> I said eternal happiness. Happiness on earth. At our retreat, uh, Beth's going to be ministering, at, and so will I, on um, the healing of the soul, the redemption of the soul, the salvation of the soul out of pain so that we can walk in rhythm. I think I'm probably going to share on my Hagar. I got a little Hagar message that I'll probably share. If you had the ability to share, assure your children of eternal happiness, you would give all you had for such blessings. Christ did it. Would you do that? If you love your children. If you could give them eternal happiness. An awareness of this loving, eternal purpose of the Father cannot but bring our souls to the lowest depths of a whole, humble, holy reverence and to rejoice before God with trembling. Now that means that when he made you this strong and powerful and brilliant and charismatic man capable of doing incredible physical, mental things, The only way that you're going to receive this amazing love is through Jesus Christ. The love of the Father is freely given to us. He 
you love them because he wanted to love us. Some of you have been rejected in love. If you haven't, if you haven't been ever been rejected in love, just hang around long enough and you will be. If you ever pastor or go into the ministry, there will be a continual rejection. I heard a word of wisdom. Um, I can't think of this pastor's name. She and her husband pastor church, and they've been going through it like every other ministry. She said her husband said that pastoring is like driving a bus. People get on and people get off along the way. You minister to whoever, whoever's on the bus. That's true. That's what I do. I minister to whoever is on the bus. Amen. Each of us fell in love with our children when they were born. Our Heavenly Father's amazing love is exponentially magnified in anything, beyond anything you and I are capable of feeling when we fell madly in love with our spouse and when we fell in love with our children. That's his love to you. This love is unchangeable. And though we change every day, yet his love does not change. When our children challenge us and the world around them, does any of you remember when you began to begin to challenge the world around you and you were going to rearrange it to whatever your view was at whatever age you were? Even the church. We may fall out of like with our children and their actions. You ever fell out of life with your children? Mm -hmm. You never fall out of love with them. All they have to do is come up and be just sweet and nice and loving and <laughs> tell you how wonderful you are mm -hmm. and how they appreciate you. And you will go all over your house and empty it up and give them everything you got. <laughs> <laughs> We had to correct them with discipline. I brought a correction to Colin when I marched out that movie. Now he said he'll never go to the movie with me again. Do you think that hurt my feelings? <laughs> because we know our battles and life challenges make us stronger. We have the wisdom to know this is how our children will become strong, is to take their own risk and then fight their own battle. Amen. When they get out there, we get some of you didn't hear my story uh, and before church started, but anyway, we had a little situation. And uh, Mason was in his own battle. He took a risk using his brandy. But when he was out there in his risk, Randy didn't rescue him. I didn't move in there and rescue him. I let him take his, mm -hmm. what, the consequences of, uh, of his situation. Every man in this church knows the challenges before your son or daughter that you will have to train them to overcome. And their generation is a lot darker than the one you grew up in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, 6 through 11. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. And scourges. I looked up scourges, and that means a horse whip. A whip. A hickory stick. A birch stick. No, not in this generation. He, he scourges every son whom he receives. Now, we know what it is to go through the wilderness. stay there because we're not supposed to wander around it. We're, we're supposed to go through. We're supposed to go through the wilderness. We're not supposed to be wandering around in it. If you endure discipline, God deals with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father does not discipline? If you're not disciplined, then you're not sons. We have a father of our flesh who corrected us and we gave him respect. Do not be afraid to discipline your children. They 
they will give you respect for it. Don't be afraid of losing their love. That's right. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of Spirits and live and have the blessing of the Father of Spirits on our life than to be in subjection to our children and let them rule over us because they're going to threaten us to remove their love from us? Our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few days after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. No chastening for the present seems to be joyous. I was speaking with a gentleman this week, this before I left, and uh, I had brought a very gentle correction. So he called me and he said, you got me. He, he said something else. I said, well, I'm trying to keep you out of the woodshed. Amen. I'm trying to keep you out of the woodshed. And I'm not coming into agreement with you on this because I'm not going to the woodshed either. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 He, was try, he was trying to suck me in into mm -mm. cutting into some gossip and just cutting in, you know, Joe Cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Joe Cool says I'm cool and I can uh, critique someone else. Mm -mm. <coughs> if I can critique them, I'm cool. Mm. Now that's what gets you in the woodshed. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, it gives the peaceable fruit of righteousness to them who receive. Because the Father's love is fixed and unchangeable, he shows us infinite patience and forbearance. If his love was not unchangeable, we would perish. Amen. We must believe this in order to receive the love of the Father. It's by faith. You say, how do I get this love, Carolyn? How do I have this knowing of this love? How do I feel this love? How do I experience being loved so magnanimously by God? By faith. By faith. We must believe that God loves us and that his heart is filled with love toward us and accept his word for it. And we will never experience the sweetness of his love until we receive it. Amen. You can hold him at a distance. You can hold him off um, and say, God, it's going to be on my terms. God, I want this love of yours, but I want it on my terms. Let's see Joanne shaking her head. <laughs> So we must continually, when we go through things, remind ourselves that God loves us and embraces us with his free internal love. By his word, he presents himself to us as a father who loves us. Now, you may not have had an earthly father who was good to you and loved you, but I can promise you the Father God loves you completely. And every wound that you had growing up in childhood, he's there for you. He's got it. Embrace him by faith and let your heart be filled with his love. Believe it. Receive it. Set your heart to receive his love and let your heart be bound with cords of love. Amen. If our child comes to us murmuring, complaining, listing all of their woes and pouting, we won't feel like blessing them, right? You really you are reading their name. <laughs> the word says if we delight to do his will, he will delight in us. And that's easy. If I set my heart and my attitude, if I get a good attitude toward God, and I delight to do and rejoice in whatever he has for me at this moment in my life, he will delight in me. That's the word of God. Amen. He will delight in me. He won't delight in a rebellious, murmuring, complaining child. The child will be disciplined until they can demonstrate a better attitude. Amen. That's uh, what did I say that word was for scourge? Uh, Harsh whips. 
are taken up with Father's love as the chief delight of his nature, it cannot help but choose to be overpowered, conquered, and embraced by him. God gave me a, 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 a lesson in that car. Now, it, I can promise you, for all my years, I would never turn the radio on when I was driving. But this one time I did, but I got a mom to that was our special time. That was a time when I was communing with him. I was talking to him and listening to him. And we were together driving in that car, just me and my Lord. And he gave me an object lesson on how important that time was to him. His love will cause us to want to live eternally in heaven. The love of the Father will not make a child delight in him what will. Let us set our thoughts on the eternal love of the Father, and our hearts will be aroused to delight in him. I see um, the man and Robert, and they are, and to see the love of the Father in Robert. Oh, he is just so in love with his wife and that little baby. Mm -hmm. And I probably have told you this before, but when Kelly was a baby, and I, while I was doing the dishes at night, Don would hold Kelly in his lap, laid down, and he'd give her his box. <coughs> well, as she got over the Bible and got old enough to talk, when it came time for me to put her to bed, she said, I go to sleep in Daddy's lap. <laughs> I go to sleep in Daddy's lap. Sit down in this delightful spring of living water and we will find that our minds are all in pleasant places. The streams of life will be sweet and delightful. And those 
once you ran from God will not be able even for a second to keep at a distance from him. You'll be able to go to sleep and daddy will laugh every night. What a safe place to be. Can you imagine going to sleep in God's lap every night? And because of the precious Holy Spirit, we're able to experience the love of God through his presence. But we, in this church last Sunday, he, I mean, when I finished preaching, I mean, Jesus was walking through here. Yes. He walked through and gave out on the word a couple, three weeks ago. Jesus himself, he saw him and he gave him a word. And Alan needed that word last week. It was last week he needed that word. Herein is love, says the Holy Spirit. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Yes. Yet God loves us when there's nothing in us to deserve his love or cause him to love us. Right. Don't even think about deserving it. Don't even think about deserving uh any of the blessings that you have. That's right. It's all about his love. Amen. What honor then have all the saints to stand with boldness in the presence of the Father and there to enjoy his love. What a blessing the Queen of Sheba announced on the servants of Solomon who stood before him and heard his wisdom. How much more blessed are we stand continually before the God of Solomon, hearing his wisdom and enjoying his love. Others have their fellowship with Satan and with their own lust. Christians have sweet communion with the Father forever. This is our safe haven to retreat in when we suffer the scorn, reproaches, scandals, and misrepresentations of the world. Donald Trump's in a battle right now. I believe, and I hope I'm not overstating my this. You know, and each time God has a move on the earth, he's always had two witnesses. And in the book of Revelation, it speaks of the two witnesses. But in the book of Zechariah, there are the two witnesses, and they were uh, Zerubbabel and uh, Joshua, were God's two witnesses at that time. And we know that the church is always God's witness. But I am wondering, I am wondering before God. And each time you will follow through the Bible where God has two witnesses that he's chosen to come forth as leaders of men, there will be a civil authority and there will be a spiritual authority. As in Zerubbabel was the uh, civil authority and Joshua was the spiritual authority. But it seems to me that it appears to me, and I cannot say thus says the Lord, that God has raised up two witnesses. One is in the civil authority of Donald Trump, and the other is in the spiritual authority of Franklin Graham. Mm -hmm. Both are in battle. I cannot say this for sure. I tell you sometimes what I think. And then when I tell you God told me, I God told me. But if you're hated by the world, you're hated by the world, we're talking about the cosmos, yes. the government of the world, yes. the world that is run by the governments of men. Yes. If you're hated by the world, that's a real big flag yes. that you're doing something right. Yes, it's a good place. Amen. Amen. But when we're hated by the world, there's a place where you and I can go. Yes. Amen. And do not think because you're in the ministry or you have a platform or you're, uh, you're beautiful and you're charismatic or you're handsome or you're, you know, everything God knows uh, that you're not going to be rejected. That's right. But there'll always be someone jealous of you, competitive with you, and won't let you have and say, well, why is she up there or he up there preaching what it should be me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And though all others hate me, 
Yet my father is tender and full of compassion. I can tell you that every preacher, pastor in this city that's got 10,000, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 members, I bless them and I thank God that they have it, not me. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. But we can all go to God and find happiness in Him. I have honor and love with the Father whose kindness is better than life itself. In Father's love is everything I desire. There I find the sweetness of his infinite mercy, even when I mess up. Who can condemn or criticize you if God loves you and approves of you? Amen. Listen, ministries have been going through it the last two and a half, three years, everywhere. Yes. And when I talk to. And so if you see a ministry struggling through something, don't say, well, no, 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 no. I tell you what, I saw... I knew that they were doing wrong. If they had done this, this wouldn't have happened. You're going through it too. Mm -hmm. You need to be praying for that ministry. Mm -hmm. And not making a critique of what they're doing or not doing right or wrong. Right. Goes for musicians and ministries and everybody. Good That's a good way to get the woodshed. Mm -hmm. Way to get that horse kick. <laughs> Criticism and condemnation have no uh, no power to affect your joy and happiness in this life with God. Let the world think as they please. That's right. Mm -hmm. The Christians have intimate, spiritual, heavenly joys because our fellowship is a fellowship of love with the Father. We keep company. We keep company with the Father of glory. The Father of glory rides in my car with me. Amen. And so I, I had my radio on listening to some pundits that didn't know anything they were talking about. <laughs> you got to sleep. They know absolutely nothing about nothing. And the Father of glory was riding in the car with me, and he was like, why do you want to listen to them? <laughs> That's right. Shall sin and lust dwell in those thoughts? receive from and give love to the Father. Holiness is required in his presence forever. An unclean spirit cannot draw near to God. He'll bring that part of your soul and spirit that is sanctified, but that unclean part, soul and your spirit cannot draw near to God. An unholy heart cannot abide with a lewd person will not desire to hold fellowship with one who is pure. Amen. I mean, someone who is just totally lewd, do they want to hang around you? <coughs> will a man with a vain and foolish thoughts hold communion and wealth with the most holy God? No way. Thinking much of the Father's love is a powerful motive to holiness and leads the soul into holiness. Walking with God is not a matter of outward appearances, but of an inward reality. Amen. There, we are in a time, and we should be very much aware of it, through your journey to Christianity, and I can promise you that through mine, there have been many who have uh, throw me under the bus along the way or uh, treated me poorly or did things that to me to, to sabotage mm -hmm. the ministry. Just pure and simple. Okay. There's a turning of this. And God's bringing them back to my life. Every single one. <laughs>
the restoration of his body and bringing his body into that place of unity that we're to come and to bring him into the place of maturity that God wants us to be. I got a bug up. Right? Right, because he's going to try to throw you under the bus again, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, he does it again. That's the risk. You got to be, be ready. Amen. Be, and you, that's the risk. But you don't but I, you don't get your emotions out there. That's right. If you're, you're, a, you're a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're sent to minister right. yes. the life and word of that's God right. to whomever you're sent. Right. And it's never personal. Oh, that's Amen. Right. Amen. 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 And once you get detached from the junk stuff, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Christian, if you, if you got any gossip in you, you it will keep you out of that loving place. Amen. If you got anything in you that says, I've got the last word and I know more than anybody else, let it go. God is doing something right now that we're all going to have to straighten up because it's a time when God is calling his church to separate us out from all of this evil and wickedness in the world. Mm -hmm. I really believe uh, that he has raised up two witnesses. Uh, and he's raised up two witnesses at this time. Uh, these are going to be anointed uh, to lead the army of God against the army of that which is evil. Uh, and I know which army I'm going to get in. And, um, and I'm going to get behind uh, the army that God is in and the witnesses that he's leading. And I'm going to get behind that army and I'm going to follow God. And you're going to have to decide what you're going to do. Amen. 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 Good word. Amen. I salute the dudes perfect in our church fellowship. Amen. Amen. We, have, we have no idea how precious and blessed it is that we have so many strong men in this church. That's mm -hmm. right. You're seeking the Lord not only for your personal relationship with Father God, which I know that's why most of you are here. You, you're, you're reaching out for all you've got. You're, you're reaching for more of what God ha wants to do in you. Mm -hmm. For your families and your communities and the world. <laughs> you're also holding up my eyes. Amen. And important that you're holding up the Lord's arms on this journey. Because he said, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? That means not everybody will be holding up his arms mm -hmm. when he returns. Thank you, dudes, perfect. Amen. At East Bay Church for being here today and for allowing me to love you and have you in my life. And for you sweet, precious lives who share him as part of this church. We have communion today. Joanne has it ready. And we have 